Well, hi, hey, hello, everyone. So I am here to finally answer my Q&A questions. I know, I'm sorry, it's been a while, but here I am. So I'm not doing these in order just because some of them I may or may not ramble on. And some of them are a little bit shorter. So sorry if you ask a question before somebody else and it's not answered first, but I promise everyone that your questions will be answered. So the lost reader had asked, who are some of my favorite authors? And to be honest, I don't know if I've read enough to have a favorite author. I kind of think, at least for me, I need to read a certain amount, but I would have to say if I had to pick, based on the fact that I liked more than one book by these authors, definitely, of course, Suzanne Collins, as she's written my favorite book, J.K. Rowling, um, I love Harry Potter, Kate Camillo, Libba Bray, Anne Rice, and John Green. Uh, Mindy's Book Journey had asked if I have any pets. Uh, yes, we do. We have actually a few. And they're kind of like walking around and everything right now. And, um, so sadly I can't bring some of them out. Uh, well... The dog's here, but for some reason, he's not bothering me. Like, I made my video on my uh, Florence and the Machine Lungs album review, and he was, like, all up in there. So if you want to see the dog, definitely watch that one. Uh, my cat, Spirit, he has been in several videos, so you definitely can see him. We also have another cat, a turtle, and I have a gerbil upstairs. Oh, and their names. So the dog is Maverick. The gray cat, which is my mom's and brother's, is Smokey. My cat is Spirit. He's all white. And the turtle's name is Leo. Um, oh, Matilda Gothica had asked about my channel name and the Bart Simpson comic uh, book that I was reading. And I believe it was called The Big bratty book of Bart Simpson. There was two, but I'm pretty sure that was the right name. So, the channel name. So, I, in the last year or so, decided to move more towards the booktube, even though I'm doing other videos on spirituality and movies, etc. My channel has definitely um, become a lot more book-inspired, I guess you would say. And because Mockingjays are part of my favorite series, and I like lattes and mochas and stuff like that, I'm a big coffee drinker, I thought it was kind of a cute name. I love the symbolism of the Mockingjay and what it stands for and everything, and, you know, or more or less how they used it and such. And I thought it rhymed, so lattes and Mockingjays. Uh, you know, trying to be cute, trying to be colored clever, uh, and trying to have a bookish name without having a book in there, I suppose, or reads. So Michael from Catalyst Reads, and he went off before I can really copy down this question, but, um, He asked about the two Goosebumps movies, like if I liked them or not. So I took Nathaniel, which is my son, to see it with my father um, just a few days ago, last week, something like that. It wasn't all that long ago. And while the special effects are good and the acting is good, it's not a bad movie. It seems quite distant, distant from the actual Goosebumps series. See, the first movie had Jack Black playing Arl Stein. 
of course, so it's very fictitious and everything, so the, not the actual author. But they had actual characters from the books, you know, such as the Abominable Snowman and, uh, what was it, the Big Praying Mantis, you know, and all that other stuff. It was much more related to the actual series, even though it's not based on a book, it was based more on its characters. Where is the second movie is something, it's about something called Haunted Halloween, which is an unreleased Goosebumps book. And I have no idea if R.L. Sine had ever actually written anything like that, if they just made it up for the movie, but it's nothing that uh, readers would know. And they kind of play off on that on in the movie, but... Being a big Goosebumps fan, while the second one was good, it had good effects and everything, I did like a lot of the first one better. Um, I felt the first one had a lot more comedy in it, and it was a little bit more adventurous in a way. While the second movie was good, I just... Maybe because I was a Goosebumps reader growing up, I preferred the first one. His other question was, what are some of the best and worst movies I've seen this year? So I'm trying to remember between last year and this year what I had seen. And it's all kind of a mixture and everything. Um, I honestly can't remember if we've seen Tomb Raider. This year, or was that last year? I don't remember, but it was enjoyable. I've never played the games and everything. I've seen the movies. Uh, was it Angelina Jolie that played in them? I, it was a, quite a while ago. I've seen those. They were okay. This movie was pretty good. Uh, it was entertaining, but like I said, I don't know too much about the actual Tomb Raider uh, like franchise and everything. So I just kind of going by the entertainment of the movie. It was good. We've seen the last Transformers movie, for the love of God, I don't remember what the subtitle is now, because they have, like, what, five of those damn things out now. It was okay. Obviously, it was more entertaining for my son. Um, I kind of prefer the earlier ones better, with Sam and everything. Um, these ones are just kind of too, way too gloomy and everything, and just, I don't know. They're not as fun to me. Truth or Dare was a lot better than I thought it was going to be. That one, that one kind of got that one got kind of gruesome. Uh, the worst one I think has to be Tales from the Hood too. So I remember watching the original when I was a kid, and it was just uh, scary back then because you know, I was a little kid. Now, it, the second one just seems kind of ridiculous, ridiculous in a lot of aspects. But I, of course, like anthology, so I kind of like that aspect of it. But, yeah. Oh, I seen Moana for the first time this year. And I think that was around February. And I really liked Moana. That was a fun, cute little cartoon. I'm trying to think of what else I might have watched. That really stuck. Um, just because I watched a lot of movies that I've seen before. I watched Dodgeball for the first time in a long time. I don't know if I found it as funny as I did the first couple times I watched it, but it's still a good comedy. Uh, we watched, pretty sure we watched Step Brothers over here, which that one is still funny. Uh, I like that one better than Lunchball. Uh, watch Ever's New Groove and, of course, Lilo and Stitch, which are adorable cartoons. So I haven't really gotten into anything too new new. Oh, I almost forgot because it's not in my. Um, little box for my video my friend Sam had asked about me retiring to Europe one day 
I don't know if I've thought that far ahead, Sam, but, and I don't know if I would want to live anywhere else but the United States. However, some places I would love to visit in Europe would definitely be um, England, Ireland, Germany, and Italy. Probably Greece, too. So, so, moving on to the final questions. These are from Todd the Librarian. Sorry, I'm getting a little sick. So, Todd the Librarian asked me a few really good questions. So, the first one is... What prompted you to become a writer? So Todd, for your questions, I have written notes, as you can see here. So what I put is, I wanted to be a writer since I was about eight years old. I've always loved stories, then at some point I realized I like telling them. So, <clears throat> that's about as far back as I can remember, is that I really started picking up my reading at about eight to nine years old. So, like, I loved books and stories earlier than that, but I really started getting more into it, especially when I started reading Goosebumps and certain other books. And something just kind of clicked. It just, like... I thought that I could write my own stories and I wanted to tell my own stories and I honestly don't remember how it came to be. It just came to be. Oh, would you do knock it off? <clears throat> Sorry, cat fight. Anyways, yeah, it just, I started kind of toying around with ideas and a lot of it was inspired by other books and kind of my own twist on things and from there I just kept wanting to write. I kept wanting to create my own characters. The next one is, I realize you have a kid and a job. What is your motivation for making booktube videos? And for here, I had taking the time to just do something that I enjoy. It can be very hard to have motivation, especially when you're so tired, and I'm sure a lot of you guys um, can relate to that. But sometimes just watching BookTube, um, going back to old videos I love, getting inspired, just wanting to do more than just be tired, wanting to interact, wanting to get my thoughts out there. And yeah, just, just wanting to be more than just tired and exhausted, depressed and bored, and wanting to have that book interaction. That, I definitely think, is a big motivation. It's just the community, really. <clears throat> so, you asked me about a certain book, which I will get to, because I wrote a lot, and obviously I always have a lot to say, not just about that book, but any book that I love. So be aware. <laughs> Um, so some of the other ones that I think I can get through a little faster are, what is your dream job? So my dream job is to be an author. It is to be a professional writer and all that good stuff. If I could just live off my writing and everything, that would be fantastic. But God only knows if that's actually going to happen. But we can hope. How many times have you been drunk? I don't know. Less than 100? I know that. I probably haven't, haven't been drunk that many times. But I've drank it. Drank it. Is that even a word? I've drank quite a bit. What is your beer of choice? So I'm not too big on beer. However, I do like Blue Moon and Corona. I'm more of a vodka, schnapps, 
um, rum kind of person, you know, the heavier stuff. I do like wine coolers though, and Mike's Hard Lemonade. How many countries have you traveled to? I have not. Sadly, I have never been outside the United States, but there is a whole list of places that I would love to see. First, I want to see the entire country. Then I want to move on to other places like um, Ireland and Australia and Japan and etc. <clears throat> but you knock that off. Oh, my dog is getting into stuff. So, the final question. Final question from Todd. I know you're really big on the Hunger Games. What is it about this dystopian series that draws you in more than others in the genre? So, I don't think that I've read enough of one genre to maybe specifically like one book over another because of its genre. I'm very much a character driven person. Uh, I like character driven books but I also like books um, that have good plot obviously. <laughs> and I've definitely read more or I've read-ish more young adult books than anything else and maybe that's why I did enjoy most of 1984 which I'll be doing a review on. But, hmm, how do I put this? So yeah, maybe that, that's why. Because when I read, I, I attempted to read um, Article 5 and Reboot. And I will go back and I will give them chances. But it seemed like they tried a little too hard with the strong female character. And I just did not like the personality of the characters. And... I guess I really don't care about what happens with their world and everything if I don't like their characters. Maybe I'm bad for that. I don't know. But, like I said, I don't know if I've read enough to compare it. And maybe I can't ever compare any kind of book in any kind of genre because I might like aspects from one to another. Um, but I think for like the younger dystopian, it really has a lot to do with the writing style of the characters is why this one sticks. Although, two books that I had read before The Hunger Games were The Giver. Uh, I read Gathering Blue, too, which I was good, but I really loved The Giver, and I liked Unwind. I have not finished the Unwind series, but that book really drew me in, and it, it, it was a terrifying concept, and it was so out there. And even though I was above the age for what happens in that world, it still kind of kept me on the edge wanting to know what was going to happen. It kept me in fear for these characters. Um, so though there, though there are two other dystopians that I really love, I mean, The Giver has so much to teach us about, you know, how great having choices and freedom is. So... Besides my high recommendations of The Hunger Games, I definitely recommend The Giver. It is sad. It is beautiful. Um, but I can tell you why I liked this story and why... I hate saying why I like this dystopian because obviously we don't want dystopians to happen. But I think you guys kind of get what I mean. Like why... I liked this story and why I like this world. So I'm going to read from my notes and kind of go from there. So I think a good portion of a dystopian, whether it be classic or young adult, whatever or whatever, can offer something for us to think about. I would say I enjoyed it as a dystopian on the same level as other books. I do feel there are some dystopians closer to reality than others. And I think that's really what drew me into that story. Was, so, 
other people have done like obviously they've, they've done videos on this and Ariel Bissett brought up a good point that while we would like to view ourselves as the people of the districts like Katniss and Peta and the good guys the Hunger Games is kind of written in a way where when you step back from it you kind of realize that you're also the bad guys. So on one hand you have uh, the people in the districts such as Gale, Katniss, Peta, etc. who are forced to live in poverty. I mean she talks about hunting squirrels and eating mice and stuff to survive. And then there is the games which involve people killing each other on television, children. People literally have to draw the names of kids out of a bowl and they get to go to this arena to kill each other. And um, basically everyone watches and rich people bet on them, etc. You know? And, you know, a lot of Americans, you know, they are struggling with bills, with um, getting their rent paid, uh, putting food on the table, etc. You know, a good portion of people are middle to lower class and everything. And yeah, okay, we want to root for these people. That you, we want them to get out of this oppression. Uh, the, their government is killing them and making it into entertainment. But on this other hand, when it comes to people of the capital, who are so rich, all they have to do is wait around for the games. They dye their skin different colors. They have jewels implanted into their skin. And yeah, maybe even some of the most richest people now aren't that extravagant in things because this is supposed to be the distant future. However, everyone, and not just the rich, um, it can be the poor, it can be anybody, we are obsessed with looks. We are obsessed with celebrities and violence and all that other stuff. And somebody called the Hunger Games satire, which you normally you think of satire as funny, but it is satire. It is a depressing satire. And maybe because I like stuff like South Park and things that kind of make fun of real life that I like this one. I just, I love the fact that she, first of all, wrote a poor protagonist. They don't live in this nice house in the suburbs or whatever. They have real struggles. She has struggles outside of the Hunger Games, you know? Because in real life, there are multiple things that go on. Um, you don't just leave work and have no worries about home. You don't go to work and not have home things, you know, to deal with. It, it just... Things are just all over in real life. And what else did I put down here? So, yeah, I love the fact that it has real struggles. Um, poverty, not just the districts versus the capital and everything, but how the government uses money to divide people within their districts. Um, because there's the whole Tessere thing. Um, if you put your name in more, you can get oil and grain for your family, whereas somebody who is more uh, richer or has more money, obviously they don't have to add their names more times. And, you know, that creates, like, an animosity between people. And the whole point is for people not to unite to rebel against the government. And just the whole aspect of the value of life. We see it all the time. We see people, no matter what their political position are, is that they're... And this is not to say everyone. Not everyone on the left, not everyone on the right. But there are people who are quite hypocritical. There are people who are against prejudice and racism and all that other stuff, but everything's the fault of white men, especially Christian ones. And I'm sorry if that hurts people's feelings. 
But there are people who are like that. Is everyone in that position like that? No. There are people who are very much pro-life and everything. And they hold certain religious values, but have no problem bombing countries because of certain reasons. Yet, children also live there. And again, that's not to say that everyone who follows that party or those um, beliefs associated with that is that extreme. But we do have extreme people. And there's a part in the book where Effie, their escort, is talking about so they try to play up um, their tributes and everything and get sponsors and she's trying to say that they have the story about where they overcame the barbarism of their district and so you you have this woman who basically comes from a society where the poor is viewed um, as subhuman, basically. That they just throw these kids into this arena and these people sit there and cheer on them killing each other. And But because they are poor, they are the barbarians. So it just gives you like different perspectives because not everyone from the capital views that way. And there are people in the districts who aren't the greatest. They carry prejudice and anger and such. So it really gives you... Uh, the, the characters aren't one-dimensional. And I, I love the fact that they kind of have this cultural thing in each district and such. I wish she would have explored that a little bit more. But it is what it is. So, yeah... That is some of the reasons that I love that series. Anyways, that is my Q&A. I think it's gone on long enough. If you guys sat through all this, thank you. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.